Greetings of the sticky sweetest variety, my beloved viewer minions. Introductions are in order. I am your host for the remainder of your attention span, Steve Argyle, 2D and 3D artist, four-time winner of the coveted Andromeda's Greatest Lover Award in the category of five tentacles or less. Today I'll be answering some of the deepest questions that have simmered in the minds of artists and philosophers for millennia. Questions like Aristotle's famous query, how can we, as creatures of supreme intellect, use Photoshop's custom brush engine for more than just cheap stamps? And the quandary the Buddha carved into a cherry tree. Do artists really get all the chicks, or am I just wasting my time? Fortunately for you, earnest viewer, the voices in my head tell me that yes, digital art is the path to love, riches, happiness, and all-encompassing power the likes of which mortals cannot fathom. So, let's get started, shall we? I've been asked to start with this image, which was featured on the back cover of Exotique 5. What I'll do is quickly run you through the process used to create this image, uh, dropping some nuggets of tips and tricks as we go, and then I'll start a new painting from scratch to better illustrate what in the world I'm talking about. Now, I've already got a time-lapse video of this particular piece posted on YouTube, so, in my infinite laziness, I'm just going to recycle that. Not that you haven't heard this before, but the first thing that you need is a good drawing. The description for this one called for a sexy battle mage emerging from the jungle, demonstrating her dominion over it. So, I went with sort of a vine surfer idea, where she's essentially using this thick, almost unnavigable vegetation to propel her. Kind of like, so long as there's enough green things, she can fly. I believe in doing as many preliminary sketches as you can stand. I very rarely use my first sketch, um, or the second. Usually I do about a dozen and I kind of mix and match. It's important to brainstorm and get all of your ideas on paper as quickly as you can. Don't waste any time on detail and all that kind of crap. And then you evaluate what's working and what's not in each of your little scribbles and combine all the strengths in that really rough stage before you start drawing and long before you start rendering. You've heard this before, but it bears repeating. Good paintings come from good drawings. Now, those of you who watch Mythbusters will argue that you can indeed polish a turd. Uh, but seriously, the work you do before you start painting is way more important than anything else. Unfortunately, because this piece is a little bit old, I could only dig up two of the sketches that I did. Uh, this first one has some dynamic stuff going on, but it looked a little bit too much like she could be falling or being dragged down by the forest, and I felt the composition was a little too centralized. This next one, it could have been fun because the amount of detail I could have put into, like, makeup and trinkets and things like that, but much of the suggestion of flight and magic use would be lost. I felt that this pose would work well. I knew that with the vines and the jungle actually touching her, it would be more likely to visually anchor her to the ground rather than convey that it's lifting her. So to counteract that as much as I could, I went with a really classic flying pose. The next most important thing was to create a flow in the vines around her so they looked like they were lifting and reaching out. Now with those things addressed, the next thing would be to put some clothes on her. Magic the Gathering is for ages 13 and up after all. So at the time I was sketching this, I was listening to a lecture series from the teaching company on ancient Egypt. Highly recommended by the way. And you can see how some of that influence crept in. I used a lot of the same colors and styles of adornment that the ancient Egyptians used. Now, for illustration work, I like to design the character costumes in the scene. I do usually rough out some ideas beforehand on kind of the classic Da Vinci pose, but when it comes to the drawing, a lot of the costume is created to address the composition. For example, I had already intended to give her a crown or a tiara, but seeing how much volume her hair was going to take up in the scene, I decided something needed to break up all that space. So a basic crown evolved into that long headdress of floaty rocks or whatever, and I gave her necklaces and little bangle things all over the place so that there was, so there was more to reiterate that feeling of movement. I had these floating bone daggery things, 
but in the end I thought this was already a really busy piece and it didn't need any more clutter. Not to mention we're already dangerously low on space to show the environment that she's in. Okay, looks like we've gotten onto the fun painty goodness. You should always work out your basic colors early. Uh, again, start rough, try a few different things. With digital art, you can throw colors down in just a few minutes, so there's no excuse not to do color thumbnails. Uh, I don't actually have any of those around for this piece, but I totally did some. I super swear. See, you may think you're done composing the piece when you're done drawing, but you're not. See, now you have to think about value and color, and things start to move around when you add them. And just like your drawing, you need to have everything worked out before you get to that tedious rendering bit. Consider your light sources. The light source is what will give your piece a certain mood, and it's what describes volume and shape. An understanding of light is going to make all the difference when you get to the painting stage. Okay, so a lot of that probably isn't new to you. The foundations, they're extremely important. And I'll be the first to admit, they're not my strong point. I need a lot of work in that stuff too. So I'm going to point you elsewhere for lessons on anatomy, composition, proportion, and perspective, and to give you my highest possible recommendation to spend as much time as you can on that stuff. What I will share with you in the next video is some Photoshop sorcery for surface rendering and special effects. I will meet you there. Bring cookies.